I'm so tired of people telling me to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid. I'm never going to grow up. Or I was a Toys R Us kid. I'll just make my own toys. And the Lincoln Log Company is probably going to hate this video because today I'm going to show you how to make your own toy logs. The awesome thing about this project is that you can use just about whatever scrap 3 quarter inch material you have laying around. But today, I'll be using 1x12s because that'll minimize the amount of routering that I have to do. So let's get started by cutting three basic sizes. I'm making some at 4 and 3 quarters inches long. I'm making a few at 8 and then a handful at 1 and a half inches long. Alright, so now I've got my router table set up. So I've got a half inch straight bit in here and this bit is going to cut 3 sixteenths of an inch deep into the wood and then I've got a, a half inch uh, from the fence here and if anything you want to be tight on the fence you don't want to be loose here. Alright so now I'll go ahead and run all these pieces through on both sides and both edges. All right, so now I'll set the center of this bit exactly four inches from the fence. Then we'll run those big ones back through on both sides. All right, so we're about to cut all these into half inch strips. But before we do that, this is the best time to sand these down and get rid of all these little frillies from the router. Because um, if you don't do that now, it's gonna, you're gonna have to sand each one of these individually. So let's set up the table saw to cut these up into half inch strips. And if anything, you want to err on the side of being thinner rather than thicker. If they're too thick, they won't fit into each other. So for my perfectionist watching this video, I am going to take some of these and I'm going to trim the notches off of one side of these. And I'll be using the table saw to do that. And that's going to allow these little logs to sit flush on the table or on the ground when they're being played with. Now that I've got a pretty decent stack of little logs here, um, I'm going to go ahead and round the edges because when I think of little log cabins, I think of round logs. Now obviously you could use these just the way they are and as you can see they work just fine. Um, but I want them to look a little bit more natural and more like little logs. And so I'm going to round the edges a little bit. On the prototypes over here, I used the router bit to do this and I didn't enjoy how close my fingers were to that router bit. And so I'm going to use the sander over there uh, to round the edges instead of using the router. When you start to do the sanding, if you have any of your pieces that are a little bit too tight, all you have to do to fix that problem is just to sand these two wider edges and then they should fit a lot better after you do that. Here's a look at what the completed individual pieces should look like. And just keep in mind, kids aren't going to care if these aren't perfect as long as they work right. Next, let's go ahead and make the gable ends for the sides of the house. And it's nice to have options when you're playing with these things, so let's go ahead and make two different sizes. Alright, so on this first one, the bottom is four and three quarter inches long. On the left and right sides, I'll make those three quarters of an inch tall, and then this middle piece will be three inches tall. I'm also going to make some bigger ones that are eight inches long. And the middle is still going to be three inches on this one. And just like the smaller ones, I'll make the edges three quarters of an inch high. Here's 
here's what these look like after I cut them out. Pretty basic. All right, so now I wanna thin these things down just a little bit because they're a little too thick. And I'm gonna thin them down to a half inch wide. I don't have a fancy planer or anything, so I'm gonna do something just a tiny bit dangerous here. Don't be like me. Yeah, so that's what we're after right there. And as you can see, I've got some damage on my push stick from uh, getting a little too close to blades at other times, but it worked. All right, so now I'm gonna clamp all these together so the bottoms are all flush. I'm gonna be routering the bottom of these gables. That way they fit inside of the toy logs. One might be enough. I'll be routering the bottoms of all these pieces just like I did the toy logs. And that's gonna allow those to lock into place at the top of the house. Now on the small pieces, we only need notches on the left and right sides. But on the big one, I'll go ahead and throw a notch in the center just like we did on the longer logs. I used to hate the Lincoln Logs we played with as a kid because of the roof and they were just all a bunch of slats and when you played with them they'd fall apart. So I'm making this one with just like a hinge in the middle here and uh, this will allow you to set the roof on top and if you want to play on the inside you can take it off and just play inside. So to make mine I'm just going to cut up some 5mm plywood and if you don't have 5mm quarter inch will work just fine as well. Now what I've got is a few pieces of 5mm plywood cut out for the roofs. And what I've got here is one, a couple pieces that are 8 inches long and these are 5 inches wide and these are for these long sides right here. Uh, I've got a couple cut out for the short side and the short logs here and these are 4 inches wide and 8 inches long. And then I did one for the short side and the short eave as well. And these are 4 inches wide and 4 and 3 quarter inches long. So I made these to match the individual logs and the eaves here. All right, so now I'm gonna get a little bit fancy and sand the top edges of all these pieces so they're a little bit at an angle so you don't see the edge of the plywood. All right, so let's see how that's gonna work. Now I'm not concerned about it being perfect. I just don't wanna see those edges. I think that's gonna work pretty good, don't you? All right, so now I'm gonna throw some cheap hinges on that I found on Amazon. Now my screws are just a little bit long for this plywood, but instead of going and digging up some more, I'm just gonna cut the ends off with a grinding wheel. Now I did come back and sand the very tip top of these gable ends. And that's just going to keep those hinges from getting in the way when they sit down on top there. Alright, let's make a couple chimneys. Uh, to do that I'm going to be using a 1x2 and I'm just going to cut a few pieces to 2 inches long. Wow. I think I'll make one to fit this big eave and then I'll make two for the smaller one. Alright, so for the little toy logs and the gable ends, I'll be finishing those with this butcher block finish. And I'm using this stuff because I have it laying around and it's about to go bad. Not only that, but if a kid puts it in their mouth, it won't hurt them. Or it shouldn't hurt them anyways. I know, I know, chimneys are supposed to be red. Well, I don't have any red and orange is the next best thing. And 
since I'm the one that built them, I'm the first one that gets to play with them. And I promise you, this is a much better toy than a stupid tablet. And besides that, I'm grounded from my tablet anyways. These little toy logs are a lot of fun to make, and the best part is, you can eliminate some scrap wood in your shop at the same time. I'm really excited to see how much they like this design because the roof is a lot easier to get into. And like I said, that's one of the big things I didn't like about the toy logs I played with when I was a kid. And that's one of the cool things about a project like this is that you can do just about whatever you want. It's all part of the learning process. I hope you enjoyed today's simple do-it-yourself project. If you did, you can let me know by smashing that like button. Then check out this video. You'll like this one because I share seven of my best-selling woodworking projects along with video plans to build them. Subscribe.